Hey everyone, I'll start by saying this video is not sponsored at all. Today I just wanted to share with you a affordable, expandable 4K surveillance camera solution that does not require a subscription. This is a system that you can DIY. It's really simple, it only has a couple of hardware components. And at the end of this video, I'll walk through a cost breakdown. So I ended up deciding on these cameras based on a bunch of YouTube reviews that I watched. And I went with a certain switch based off the required specifications and the quantity of cameras that I have. Boom! These cameras are Reolink's RLC 820As. They are 4K PoE cameras. These are actually the dome style, but they're available in the bullet style. These cameras are PoE, which means they are powered by and send data over a single network cable, either Cat5 or Cat6. In the reviews that I watched, the Reolink cameras consistently outperformed the competition. They had excellent night vision, and the daytime clarity was excellent. They also feature a person and vehicle detection feature. They can also take up to a 256 gig micro SD card so you can record right to that SD card from the camera. There's also a 12 megapixel version coming soon. At the time of this video, uh, it wasn't actually released yet. And I think those were about $99 each. Here's a switch I went with. It's a Netgear PoE switch. Uh, the exact model number is GS108LP. That's an eight port PoE switch, which means this actually pushes power over anything that's plugged into it. So the reason I only went with two cameras this time is because I have an existing Night Owl system, which you'll see in a minute. One of the cameras actually went out and then I wanted to add an additional camera to the system. These work out pretty well. I'll end up replacing all of those and eliminate that old system that I had. It was just a 1080p system and it was analog, so it required power injectors and the analog cable. And as you'll see in a minute in the closet area that I have it, it just adds a lot of unnecessary clutter. So this is the bulk of the hardware right here, the two cameras and the PoE switch. Uh, of course, it, the system is expandable. So as long as your switch has the capacity, you can add more cameras. Okay, next you'll need some Cat5 cable or Cat6. I basically just ran the cables through the attic from where the cameras are to a centrally located network closet. Now on the ends of each cable, you could either install these RJ45 ends, which is what you would find on the end of a regular Cat5 cable, or a Keystone style jack, and then have a small patch cable running from the jack to the camera, depending on where you end up installing them. In my case, I actually installed the cable ends on both ends, which isn't ideal. Typically, you would want to install a permanent jack and then just utilize a patch cable to connect the camera to the jack. In my case, it made more sense to install these cable pins. So before we move on to the install, I should mention that one of the big reasons I went with these real link cameras is that they are on VIF, on VIF, on VIF compatible, uh, which means basically means they're kind of universal. And eventually I plan on getting a Synology or some other type of NAS unit that's compatible with own VIF cameras, and I'll have those cameras recording to that NAS instead of to the internal SD card. That way I can have a lot more storage and then utilize either the Synology surveillance app or something similar. But for now, they work perfectly fine recording to an internal micro SD card, and I utilize the Reolink app. There's also a desktop version of the app, or you can reach the camera footage through any browser. Okay, starting with the pre-install, there's some preparation work here. You wanna go ahead and install your micro SD cards. On one of the cameras I actually forgot, and it's not quite as easy trying to do it when the camera's upside down and you're at the top of the ladder. So you wanna make sure you install these ahead of time before you mount the cameras. From there, of course, you wanna run your cables, terminate the ends. Okay, I'll briefly go over this termination process. I first started by stripping back the insulation, then I separated each individual wire and sorted them according to the T568B standard before crimping on the RJ45 connector. When you crimp on the end, you wanna make sure the connector grabs the outside insulation and then the individual wires go all the way to the end to fully make contact with those metal contact points. If you're feeling adventurous, you can crimp on your own cable end or just purchase already made really long patch cables.
Once I phase out the night owl, I will redo my network closet and I'll probably end up putting in a patch panel and have patch cables going to the PoE switch and just clean it up in general, make it look really nice and neat. Next, depending on where those cameras end up going, you either want to install a low voltage ring or some type of surface mount box. In the ceiling area of the front porch, I had plenty of room, so I was able to just utilize a low voltage ring and faceplate, which I'll go back and paint eventually. Also figure out some type of weatherproof cord connector that goes in the knockout. But for now, I just notched the knockout hole and ran the cable through that. So once I got my cameras mounted, I utilized the app to position the cameras. For this camera, I utilized a surface mount box because I didn't want to cut a really large hole in the eave. All right, now on to the cost breakdown as promised. Starting with the Switch, I spent about $75 on the one that I purchased a couple weeks ago. I checked recently and they are about $100 for a Netgear 8 port PoE Switch, power over ethernet. The Rio Link cameras I ordered straight from their website. They were on sale for $68 each and the micro SD cards were $13 each. You can install up to a 256 gig micro SD card in the cameras, but I went with a 64 gig for about $13 each, and so far uh, they keep plenty of days worth of motion footage. Finally, the peripherals. You can get Cat5 at Home Depot right now for about nine cents a foot, or purchase a box. So the grand total, I spent about $275 for the setup that you see now. That's two cameras, plus the switch and the micro SD cards. I can add each additional camera and micro SD card for about $80 each, since I already have the hardware in place and the extra cabling. Well, I hope all that helped someone in the market for a surveillance system. Uh, you can go with a affordable camera and still get really good quality without having to pay for some kind of subscription or pay for cameras that I've seen, some are like $375 a piece. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about this specific setup. Please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back with you. Thanks for watching.